There's a lot of mythical creatures and fantastic beasts that will be available for us to tame, mount and fight in Hogwarts Legacy and I'm going to walk you through 10 of them which I think you're going to find interesting. I'm also going to classify each beast in this video with the official Ministry of Magic danger level classification which is composed of five categories so you have more of an idea on how dangerous they are perceived to be by the wizarding community. And let's first start with a big hitter, those being dragons. And from what we've been shown so far we can confidently deduce that the dragon also all dragons that we're going to be coming in contact with will be the Hebridean black dragon that is native to Britain. It actually requires over 100 square miles of territory to remain comfortable which is why it's settled in the Hebrides of northern Scotland. There's loads of space to roam around in and it may also be why we've actually seen it quite close to Hogwarts as if you didn't know that's where the school is based. Now the dragon itself is noted as having rough scales, brilliant purple eyes, razor sharp ridges on its back and an arrow shaped spiked tail which is visually ticking all of those boxes that we can see from the gameplay trailer and it's widely considered to be much more aggressive than its Welsh counterpart that being the common Welsh green dragon which by the way are the only two native dragons to the British Isles that we currently know of. Now the official Hogwarts Legacy account on Twitter recently posted a little teaser for us regarding dragons. It asked friend or foe, foe being quickly followed by a clip of our Hebridean black so even though we've been informed that we'll be able to tame beasts I'm not so sure we'll be able to get a Hebridean black under our control just yet. But with that being said, I do hope that we'll be able to ride one in the future, but I think we're going to have to leave the caretaking of these dragons down to the McFusty clan who have traditionally taken responsibility for the management of their native Hebridean black dragons for centuries. Now moving on to Hippogriffs, they are absolutely iconic with Harry Potter and I'm really pleased to see them included in the game. It's clear that we're going to be able to ride them because it's been shown visually multiple times in the gameplay trailer, as well as game director Alan Two officially stating that we'll be able to soar into the sky on the back of a friendly hippogriff. However, what's not yet clear is how we actually tame these half horse, half eagle creatures that are immensely proud and extremely dangerous. Incidentally, before taming a hippogriff, humans have to approach them and conduct themselves with the appropriate etiquette which needs to be maintained to avoid danger. We must show the hippogriff absolute respect by bowing to them and waiting for them to respond whilst maintaining eye contact as we've seen Harry do visually in the films. It has also officially been confirmed by Avalanche that we will be partaking in beast class, so I wouldn't be surprised if we actually tame our friendly hippogriff here or perhaps out in the wild and outside the Hogwarts grounds but only after we've taken the appropriate beast class and know the correct dance moves. Additionally, hippogriffs are also known to come in different colours such as bronze, chestnut and inky black, so if given the opportunity, I'd love to choose my own out in the wild to tame, which I think would be a great touch. Interesting fact, by the way, Newt Scamander's mother actually bred hippogriffs in Britain for a living, which helped inspire her son's lifelong interest in magical creatures. Newt was also born in 1897, which is 10 years after this game takes place, so perhaps we'll actually see her in game alongside some hippogriffs I think that would be absolutely awesome to be honest with you. Now let's move on to some Thestrals which you may remember visually from the films and which have also been confirmed to being in the game as you can see here. They're a breed of winged horse with a skeletal body, reptilian features with leathery wings that are noted as resembling bats. They're also native to the British Isles and Ireland and as Hagrid puts it Hogwarts has got a whole herd of them here. It's also thought that Hogwarts is the only place in the country that has a domesticated flock of Thestrals who are also responsible for pulling the carriages that lead elder students from Hogsmeade Station to the gates of the castle. And here's the catch, you can only see them if you've actually seen someone die. This means that in the gameplay reveal, our character has actually seen death before arriving at Hogwarts in our fifth year. So that is very intriguing indeed. On top of all that, they're well known for actually having a fantastic sense of direction. A Thestral can understand exactly where you want to go, even if it's actually never been to that location itself before. Wizards and witches need only say the name of a destination and the Thestral would diligently carry them to that location similar to ours with letters essentially so perhaps after taming one of these in game theoretically could we click somewhere on our map in game and then our Thestral would just auto travel us there while we go make a coffee I think that would be a great feature fingers crossed 
Now let's talk about these wonderful creatures called moon calves. Avalanche tells us that poachers outside the Hogwarts grounds lay traps in an attempt to capture, kill, and sell all of the various properties owned by certain magical creatures, moon calves being one of them. Now to stop that happening, we'll be able to rescue creatures like moon calves by capturing them in a suitcase, not too dissimilar to Newt Scamander's suitcase, which has an extension charm cast upon it, making the inside a lot bigger than it really is. Now comparatively, our suitcase, or bagging game, seems to operate in a similar way, allowing us to capture these moon calves and then transport them back to our menagerie to then heal them back to full health. But the interesting thing about these moon calves is that they only appear in a full moon and because Avalanche have officially stated that there will be seasonal weather changes throughout the game, presumably we're just going to have to wait for a full moon to actually see them. There may also be a reward for doing so because the silvery moon-like dung or poo of moon calves when collected before sunrise can then be spread on herbs, flower beds and all types of plants which is going to result in them growing incredibly fast and becoming outrageously strong. We of course can actually grow plants in the room of requirements so this would be a wonderful secret to discover in game if the developers take this into account. Boosting our crop yield by knowing certain details about specific creatures and hopefully this does happen. Now grap horns we've seen quite a lot of them so far in all manner of reveals which is quite surprising actually or perhaps not really because they were hunted to almost extinction in the 1800s and early 1900s. In fact, as shown in the Fantastic Beasts film, Newt Scamander said he was in possession of the last breeding pair in existence, which is quite telling really, as the game takes place several decades before the Graphorns dwindle to that poor state. But we now know that they're going to be heading that way, unfortunately, and one of the main reasons for their excessive poaching is because of their horns. Once grounded down into a powder, they're actually used in many beneficial potions in the magical world, and their hide is also tougher than a lot of dragon hides and repels most spells, meaning it's very sought after for a variety of different reasons as you can imagine. Mountain trolls also try to mount them and use them as transport, which doesn't go down too well with the grap horns as you can imagine, but does potentially mean that we can tame our own grap horn, bring them back to our menagerie and potentially ride them outside the Hogwarts grounds. I may be jumping the wand here, but if we can charge around on a grap horn firing off spells, I think that would be tremendous fun. And by the way, if you have enjoyed the video so far, and only if you wouldn't mind helping a fellow wizard out, a very swift like down below would be terrific so thank you very much. Now sticking on mountain trolls a little while longer we'll of course be seeing them here in Hogwarts as the game director Alan too has stated that we may be involved in a side quest where we'll need to protect innocence from a dangerous troll and it looks like this one has been let loose in Hogsmeade so that may be what he's actually referring to here and this isn't the first time we've actually seen a mountain troll. Back in the Philosopher's Stone Professor Quirrell had let a troll into the castle which was found by Hermione in the first floor girls bathroom and the thing is with mountain trolls as fearsome as they may be and weighing over a ton they are incredibly stupid which also makes them even more violent and unpredictable and there's actually three types of trolls so perhaps we'll see them in game we've got the mountain forest and river with the mountain being the largest and most vicious of all three it can be easily identified with its pale gray blue skin whereas the forest troll is green and the river troll has short horns we also seem to be getting all three of those different types of terrain in game so i do think there is potential to see a variety variety of trolls in Hogwarts Legacy and with their whiskers containing valuable magical properties often used in one cause I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be some sort of required ingredient for a consumable in game but we're just going to have to wait and see. Now they may not be fantastic beasts but I had to squeeze goblins and house elves in here as they're important magical creatures that will be playing a substantial role in the game. We know thanks to Avalanche that the main antagonist of this game is Ranrock, leader of the Goblin Rebellion who is leading a faction of goblins against the wizarding world who they believe have been subject to continued discrimination and prejudice. That said though, this isn't the first time a goblin rebellion has happened either. The first one took place in Hogsmeade in 1612, the second in 1752 where the goblins allied with werewolves and another one in the 18th century, the date I don't believe is specified, which became quite popular though as Erg the Unclean stirred up a big response. But it's now Ranrock's turn and for some extra context, goblins should not be overlooked regardless of their failed rebellions previously. They are highly intelligent and skilled with money and finances. They actually control the wizarding economy to a large extent as they run the only wizarding bank in Britain and Ireland, that being Gringotts, which looks like we will be visiting in-game as well from 
this clear minecart teaser that we've been shown, similar to what we can see in the films. They can also perform magic without wands, and to be fair, so can wizards, but needless to say, they're going to be a big obstacle for us in the game. But I'll tell you what won't be an obstacle, and that's going to be the house elves that work in the Hogwarts kitchens, clean the classrooms, common rooms, and everything else in between. They've been confirmed to be in the game, but in what capacity still remains to be seen. And for a little bit more context, if you didn't know, they're incredibly devoted magical beings and loyal to their masters, and they can only be freed when presented with clothes. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that in game, but I am sure that a few of you will certainly try. Next up, and let's talk about some Nifflers, Froopers, Cats, Kneezels, or Kneezels, depending upon how you pronounce it, Owls, and Phoenixes. I may be also jumping another wand here, but they look like they may be available for us to keep as pets in this game, even though it hasn't officially been stated as such, but rather hinted at, as owning a pet at Hogwarts is very commonplace while attending. Let's first start with the Nifflers, though. They're native to Britain, fluffy, mischievous, and have an intense fondness for anything glittery, just like a magpie. They're in fact often kept by goblins and curse breakers who use them to bury deep into the earth looking for treasure and bypass all magical protection and enchantments. But they can also be destructive to belongings and houses, which is why they're not great pets, to be honest with you, and probably why we can see the Niffler hanging out here in the menagerie and not in the common room. Unlike the black cat, though, which we can actually see here hidden away on the left-hand side of your screen, as well as what looks like a Kneezel or Kneezel, again, apologies for the pronunciation, depending upon where you're from in the world, and that is a cat-like creature which is incredibly intelligent, independent, and occasionally aggressive to those it deems suspicious with ulterior motives, just like Crookshanks from the books and the movies. We can also see an owl on our luggage pack from the initial announcement trailer a few years ago, and if we look close enough, an owl cage tucked away in the menagerie, as well as seeing the owl building in the official poster. And speaking of that poster, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see some colourful birds called floopers. They are brightly coloured African birds that will eventually drive the listener to insanity if you do listen to their songs for too long. And I wonder if we'll be able to use them just like the mandrake plants shown in the trailer to disable NPCs. I also want to bring your attention again to the Twitter post from Hogwarts Legacy around the menagerie, where we can see hippogriffs, a niffler, and what looks to me like a phoenix flying above the building. I do have a feeling this might be a little teaser. Fawkes is believed to be alive in this time, and I would love to have him as my companion in game. It's another big, fiery fingers crossed for me here. Now let's move on to centaurs because they were clearly shown in the reveal, even with a flutter of dialogue actually, so I think it's safe to say that they're going to be involved in some sort of quest line or side quest at the minimum. Centaurs are officially classified by the Ministry as beasts at their own choice, as they didn't want to be in the same being category, which actually includes vampires and hags, even though their intelligence is known to rival that of humans. Regardless of this beast classification, they shouldn't be seen as such and actually should be treated with great respect. They live in herds from 10 to 50 and are predominantly forest dwelling with a well-known colony existing in the Forbidden Forest at Hogwarts, which I'm assuming is where they're coming from here in the game. They're also notorious for being not fond of humans generally and will proactively avoid contact with witches, wizards and muggles through their own methods of concealment. I also want to bring your attention again to a massive spider on the promotional poster as well as some spell combat visuals in the trailer. My first thought is they've got to be Acromantulus spiders, which is a giant magical species of spider that is native to the rainforests of Southeast Asia, where it predominantly resides in jungles. Additionally, they're believed to be a wizard bred species designed to guard treasure hordes, which plays quite nicely into this open world RPG game. Problem is though, there's no official record canonically of the Acromantulus spider in Britain around the 1800s. So law wise, I think it's improbable to say that a colony exists in the game in that time period. However, we could have some creative freedom here. They could have been introduced to the forest and then killed off when Aragog arrived. And thanks to Hagrid's care, Aragog could have gone on to create his own colony in the forest and rule it himself. Either way, we'll have to see how they explain this, but I think they'll be good fun to blast out of the way, just like we could see in the films. Now, speaking of films, there may be a couple other non-beings you may recognize, and they are the Inferi and the Dementors. They're technically not beasts, of course, as I'm sure you know, but they've been presented to us quite a lot so far in the reveals so I wanted to break them down here for you and I think Snape describes them perfectly to Harry in the Half-Blood Prince. The Inferus or Inferi is a corpse that has been reanimated by a dark wizard spell. It's not alive it's merely used like a puppet to do the wizard's bidding so they are similar but intrinsically distinct from a zombie as they are immune to bodily damage such as slashing, have great physical strength and are very quick to engage those around it. Dumbledore also says to Harry in the Half-Blood Prince that they fear light and warmth, fire 
fire in particular and we can see from the reveal that fire spells such as incendio will be a perfect offense and defense against them in game lore wise though we're currently unsure which dark wizard has dabbled in this necromancy in regard to animating these corpses as as far as i'm aware the first time grindelwald openly discussed raising an army of infrai was in 1899 when he was 16 years old and the next time we saw such magic used was when voldemort killed his enemies and homeless people in the first wizarding war to protect his salazar slytherin locket which he turned into a horcrux and then placed in the middle of the lake by the coast. We've also seen Dementors appear in the footage so far and what is believed to be Azkaban in the background. It's not confirmed that we're going to be visiting Azkaban but if Dementors are in the game then we'll need to conjure a Patronus spell to disperse them as no one has ever demonstrated in the Wizarding World the ability to actually kill a Dementor which of course opens up another can of worms. Will we be able to conjure a Patronus and if we can will we be able to choose its form or will it be randomly given to us just like the Wizarding World or Pottermore quiz we can complete online. I think it's a lot of exciting stuff to think about i'm looking forward to more official info and if you haven't already done so do consider subscribing for more hogwarts legacy videos just like this i'm going to be making a lot more in the lead up to the release of the game at the end of the year big thanks to the reloads researchers in our discord community who helped put this video together particularly nico and nika as well as you reloaders who support me and the channel with your own hard-earned cash thank you so much i am incredibly grateful there should also be some more harry potter videos on your screen right now so hopefully see you there in a second and as usual, coffee is on me.